Sports presentation. Yeah, yeah, baseball this, baseball that. But if you want some real guy who's playing hardball, well, we've got some hard-hitting ball of our own. It's a grand slam called the NFL on Fox. The Pack and the Bears resume their renowned rivalry over there, you know. Brett's the best, so is his offense. But now, this pack can also attack on the defense. While the Windy City's no place for a street fight, because Mr. Craig can still wing it, and Curtis can definitely bring it. The Falcons enter the Lions' den, with Mr. George still picking splinters. Atlanta's potent passing attacks got Bobby getting the pill to Eric and Terrence. But in the dome, the Lions... Get it on in Big Nitty. Hey, maybe these guys read too much of their own press last week, you know? But now, Carolina's Collins is back, and this MC is a real showstopper. But the Mike's Mr. Randall can sure wrap things up. Yo, Jake the Snake takes it to go. The Niners meet their arch enemy, the Rams in St. Louis. The Niners deep will rock and roll you, yeah. but the Rams are banking on their future. Hey, man, this may not be bats and balls, but now live from the Fox Television Center in Hollywood, four screwballs who are as batty as they come. <laughs> it's the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. Week number six in the NFL, and here on Fox, it's a renewal of one of the NFL's most historic rivalries as the Green Bay Packers take on the Chicago Bears. And we'll see who's for real as the Panthers and Vikings square off, and in that game, it features the NFC's top two sack masters. And hello, everyone. I'm James Brown, welcoming you to another edition of Fox NFL Sunday. As usual, my colleagues, Terry, Howie, and Ronnie, Ronnie's team, USC, lost to Cal Berkeley. Can't believe it. Cal don't even have a fight song. <laughs> you always have a good week, but big boy, entertainment tonight. Da 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 da. -da. Yeah. I mean, is he dog. getting large or what? That won't be long. He won't be up here. Just be me and RL. My <laughs> brother, by the way, not an elder to RL Bradshaw. Billy Bob. Yeah. He sent away. He sent <laughs> away for one of Fred. Hold it. It's my story. He sent away for one of Howie's <laughs> autographed pictures to get right. an autograph. Right. Howie sent it back wanting a hundred dollars. My brother. Sent it back saying to me, he said, I hope he falls out of that pine tree. That you're not real popular in El Dorado, Arkansas. Well, well, I'll tell it? you what, what I'll do. It? I'll go home and jump off my bank book, commit suicide. Oh, <laughs> oh see, uh, see, yeah. I, that's a Hollywood response. No, that's a money response. <laughs> Make us feel bad. Time to move on. All right, folks, here's a look at what's happening around the National Football League. The quarterback swap of Atlanta's Jeff George for Seattle's Rick Meyer moved a step closer today when the Falcons resolved the $2.5 million guarantee that Meyer is owed next summer. However, the trade still may not occur because George is reluctant to accept Seattle's $30 million oh, offer yeah, yeah. for six years, TB. 30, 30 million, he's reluctant. And it includes a $5 million <laughs> signing bonus. Oh, yeah, I'd that? Be, I'd be real, I answer that head case. I, that tells me a lot about that boy's head uh, right No now. doubt about it. Listen to this. In George's ideal world, he'd rather be waived and negotiate a short-term deal with the Oakland Raiders. Mm -hmm. His mess, their mess, two big messes, that piles up. One big mess indeed. Now, in this scenario, on, the Falcons would get nothing for George, who initially cost them two number one draft choices to acquire. Now, a trade is the best solution for both teams, but if no deal is reached by Tuesday's trade deadline, both players could be released later this week. Kansas City, Denver, and San Francisco have expressed some interest in Meyer, but the former Notre Dame star would prefer to become a Chicago Bear. Wow. Time now for our Fox Watch. The Green Bay Packers have reasserted themselves as one of the league's powerhouses, and today they travel to Chicago to face the Bears. Now, as I mentioned, this is one of the great rivalries in the NFL, and today's matchup marks the 151st game between these two squads. Our own Pat Summerall is standing by at Soldier Field with this preview. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, JB. The weather is just perfect in Chicago, and as you were talking about, quarterbacks, a story here as well. You know, out of the 30 teams in the NFL, 10 of them are playing with backup quarterbacks, five because of coaches' decisions and five because of injury, which is the case here as Dave Craig will start at quarterback for the Bears. Now, last week, we talked about Eric Kramer a bit. This morning, we talked to him again, and uh, this is what basically he said, that he has the herniated disc in his neck, still a problem. He takes treatment five times a week for about a half hour. 
he has no idea what his future might be for this year or if it, indeed he'll be able to play it all again. Robert Brooks for the Packers, their outstanding wide receiver, got a concussion first play of the week, first play of the game last week against Seattle. He's going to play today. He should be fine. He'll wear a protective mouthpiece as much for his teeth as for as the concussion that he didn't have he didn't have in his mouth last week. So that's the situation here. Let's go to the Carolina Minnesota matchup and here's Kevin Hall. All right Pat a collision of first place teams as Carolina takes on the Minnesota Vikings. Both teams lost for the first time last week both on the road a more costly loss though for Carolina losing their top running back Tim Biakabatuka on this play. He tore his ACL. He is lost for the rest of the year. Also gone. They're starting left guard Frank Garcia out for three weeks. And they're starting defensive end Mike Fox. So a lot of changes. Six alone on offense. But Carolina does get their offensive centerpiece back today. In quarterback Kerry Collins will have a knee brace to protect a gimpy left knee. The Vikings story is their start. Four and one and doing it with defense. Second in sacks. Second in takeaways. Their concern however lies with their passing game where quarterback Warren Moon is still trying to find his rhythm in what was a dangerous passing attack a year ago. That's a story for Minneapolis right now to the Pontiac Silverdome and Kenny Alford. Thanks Kevin. Welcome to the Silverdome where the Detroit Lions have won nine consecutive games. Their opponent the Atlanta Falcons have lost six straight on the road and Jeff George's replacement Bobby Hebert will be without two of his leading wide receivers J.J. Burden and Burt Emanuel both injured both inactive. Their replacements, second-year men, Roel Preston and Tyrone Brown, combined for 10 catches and two touchdowns last week in the loss to the 49ers. Now, as far as the Lions are concerned, the NFL's leading receiver of a year ago and this season, Herman Moore, sore shoulder. He did not practice all week. The shoulder is still tender, but Herman Moore will start, although the Lions are not sure exactly how much playing time Herman will see. Now, defensively, first-round draft pick Reggie Brown out of Texas A&M, injured during the preseason, makes his NFL debut. He will start. And we could also see the Lions' other number one draft pick, offensive lineman Jeff Hardings out of Penn State, who was a holdout. He will not start, but we'll see some action here today. So it's the Falcons without Jeff George against the Lions from the Silverdome. Let's head back to Hollywood and James Brown. All right, Mr. Albert, and for those of you not getting an early game, you'll see Jerry Rice and the San Francisco 49ers against the Rams and their outstanding wide receiver, Isaac Bruce. That game will be at 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific, right here on Fox. Speaking of Isaac Bruce, he has an outstanding rookie quarterback, Tony Banks, who, thank God, wasn't put in at his own one-yard line, <laughs> started. He's got all the tools. Does he have what it takes to keep it going, though? Uh, what he has that's going to serve him well is youth. He doesn't know you're supposed to hold the ball that long against zone defense. He doesn't know you're not supposed to throw touchdown passes against zone defense. And he's too young. Nothing scares him, and that is his, that's to his benefit right now. Being young and not being afraid to take chances, and he's doing an excellent job. No one has an M.O. on this guy. They don't know what rattles him. It's going to take a year, maybe two. Terry, I had a chance to talk to him this week, and the great thing is this kid wants to learn. He knows that he's going to take some knocks. He knows that he's going to take some hits, and especially against that rush, he's going to have some problems today. But this guy is a nice kid. I hope that he, I hope he does the job because I really like him. Nobody, nobody has ever seen Tony Banks and those wide receivers. They got tired of running those routes, anything beyond 10 yards, because Walsh couldn't get him the ball. That offensive line got a swarf cut through him swarf. last time these two teams played. It was a sieve, and today's going to be no different. They don't have anybody that can handle those two defensive tackles. Well, wow. we'll find out if he can run then. <laughs> <laughs> he can definitely do that. Yeah. Last yeah. week's synergy, symbiotic, swarf. 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 All right, swarf. folks. Time now for our first break now, but before we do that, let's see what else is on tap for today's show. On tap! Today, on the one and only Fox NFL Sunday! Reggie White's one of the best in the business. Roddy talks life with the Packers all everything. The revered Reverend White. Also, as a quarterback goes, so goes his team. Some for the better, and well, you know the rest. Terry looks at the best and not so best of the NFL's QBs. And for the Niners, two's a crowd. Say it ain't so, Joe, but haven't we seen this before? Pam Oliver looks at the QB controversy brewing by the Bay, where Steve Young keeps spotting Elvis, baby, everywhere he turns. Coming up, coming at ya, the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Boston Market. Don't mess with dinner. 
by Porsche, who wish to remind you there is no substitute. By Philips Magnavox. Philips Magnavox is about to change the way we see and hear forever. And by Snickers. Not going anywhere for a while? Grab a Snickers. Hungry? Why wait? As we do each week, it's time for the Porsche Quarterback Report. Here are the best quarterback performances based on their touchdown interception ratio. Mr. Clairvoyant, TB, who will do well? Ah, oh, James, don't have to go very deep in my brain today. Go right to the top of the list. Brett Favre, last time he played these Bears, how many touchdown passes did he have? Mm -hmm. That's right, mm -hmm. five, count them, five. Today, another big day for Favre. You said we didn't have to go deep on TV. That's a good thing, JB. All right, folks, as you know, every I'm week. I'm a light thinker. And no, you are, you're pretty deep in D. We like to update those touchdown interception numbers, and there's a good reason for that. The number of turnovers is an excellent indicator of who will win the game. Here's what I mean. Take a look. Over the past three seasons, if a team had one turnover or less, it won two out of every three games. Conversely, two or more turnovers means that you'll lose the game two mm. out of every three games. Now, one other point. If your team has four or more turnovers, oh, tell me. absolutely, check it out. You may as well just chalk it up for a loss. It happens four out of every five games, TB. In fact, the only team that has won this year with four turnovers? No. The Minnesota Vikings against the Packers two weeks ago, TB. And, of course, that's probably because the Packers also had four turnovers as well. Yes, indeed. Indeedy, indeedy. As a matter of fact, we'll take a look at those Vikings right after this.